Could you please let's be seated. I celebrate every grace of God, um, every man of God in the church, everybody online and on site. I want to celebrate you all. But permit me to recognize a few persons. I want to celebrate my friend, Reverend Dr. Uh, Fajimi Tuji Watchmane, all the way from Abuja. <laughs> Thank you so much. When he gave me a call this morning, I didn't know he was around. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. All our guests, I really, really appreciate you. Bye, back in. I salute. Thank you so much. I want to celebrate my yoga, my mentor and my father, Reverend PJ. Reverend Bolagi Otejide. Thank you. Thank you for your investment over us. We pray that uh, the Lord will keep you strong in his work in the name of Jesus. You will not be once upon a time in Jesus' name. Eternally relevant for you in the name of Jesus. Um, this morning, honestly, I told um, Femi that he has done 50% of my job. Honestly, he has dealt with quite a lot, a lot of things that I have to share. And uh, of course, the Spirit of God is one. And uh, we follow them. I want Ghanaian. So when I grow up, I want to become like him. <laughs> Thank you so much. I honor God's grace over your life. The simplicity at which he has explained the issue of mindset, the mind shift, was powerful. And I've been blessed. And so in the next few I want to just speak for a few minutes. I want to talk. Just to talk. I'm not going to preach. I won't teach. Uh, what, I need, what I want to talk about is redefining masculinity. That's just what I want to talk about. We said it's about recalibration. To reset. So we just want to redefine it. The reason is that you know when Oga was speaking the other time, he said, if you think you are going to the way your father related with your mother, if that is the same thing you are bringing into your marriage in this generation, it's going to be a problem. And you need to understand that only God, only God is unchanging. Every other thing, they are changing. I don't know some of us that are older. I don't know if you ever imagine that the time we come, we'll be talking about AI the way we are talking about AI now. The way it was one of our pastors that was telling me that the son that was given assignment said, Daddy, you say hi to help me do my assignment. So now, if children in secondary school, primary school, are talking about us to use AI to do their examination, you know, their assignment, you know, we are in the problem. And you, you know, I just said I want to talk. You know, there is difference between AI and NHI. AI is artificial intelligence. NI is native intelligence. The more people are following the trend of AI, the less the native intelligence. So when people depend on AI too much, they lack native intelligence. And this is the same generation we are called to be as men. So if we are going to run our life, run our home, run our family, run our finance, the way the fathers did it in the days of analog, you know we are going to have a problem. It's something we have a problem. When 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 Rafael was speaking, he said he said something about the fact that the women have been taught, but who is teaching the man? Who is teaching the man? So this afternoon, I just want to share some things with us. I just want to talk. I just I just want to explain my mind, redefining masculinity. And so let's let's just talk a little bit. Sorry that so that. If I stay glued to that paper, it's about five page. So, uh, 
don't mind me. It is because of what they gave us in seminary. We write, 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 write. As a doctor, you will write. But I don't want to be talking about that. So all of us as brothers, as fathers, uncles, in every space of life, we are, number one, a man. Abi, a male gender. Number two, we are African. Most of us are Yorubas. You understand that? Amen? Are we together? Okay, the third is that, okay, quite a lot of us have religious affiliation to be Christianity. Mama, mama, low religious affiliation to be Christianity. I was deliberate. I didn't say all of us are Christians. <laughs> Amen. Now, so these three guiding forces are things that are not constant. Now look at your father. Imagine your father. Your father when you were young. Imagine is a Yoruba. And imagine his religious orientation. And imagine your own religious orientation. You begin to see that there are differences. Now some of us, our fathers are in the church. They are quite so much about activities in the church. But they didn't even come to know Christ. So they root their life, their homes with Yoruba cultural traditional mindset, mentality. That was where we were coming from. That was our origin. Now, if we don't redefine where we are based on our present experience, we will have a trouble. The trouble is what many people talk about, that in the good old days. And I want to ask, actually, the old days, was it good? Can we say, Sometimes when we talk in the church and those older generations, they will say, Nick so A man so bad to make that you better die yet you are. A man make us feel bad. A man so I am it is the answer to one. To have a collector last January or this September collector to and you are showing to us as if that you better. Don't niece. Can you go back to those days? Can you know set? And don't forget, somebody was saying, all of those experiences, all of those things, they are, bringing, they are bringing different challenges. Because as we move from the old days, and we came into the days of digital exposure, we, all of us, we are distracted one way or another by our exposure to those things. That is why even when those of us that are Christians, even when we wake up, I see some of us. By 4 30 a.m., we updated our status. <laughs> so, when we, whether you updated your status with a Bible verse or your personal meditation, you were shower online. <laughs> and that time that you are online, you were doing certain social activity. It is part of the distractions that we face. But it was not there in the days of our fathers. The time, my God was saying that he got an idea. 7 a.m. if there is no program, you know, he will now be at home. You know, in the days of our fathers, when they go to farm, they return home. And when they return home, except they want to go to school, they will sit at home and have they are homely too. They have the time. How many of us have the time? I can try it one day. I can't boast of it. And I know there is one of my father here. He can't eat. Amen. Amen. Seven or seven PM. If he's not sick. Ah! It is an apparition. In fact, I'm not in seven years old. See, you see. Amen. Now, all of these things, that is the reality of 
our own experience. So if I want to be a father, a Yoruba father, a Christian father, in this time, with my children, that will tell me that they want to watch <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes you will be very busy they will say daddy I need your phone I want to watch cartoon and I'll be looking at them say, how can you even come you saw that I'm busy we that we can't go to meet our father then even to ask for the things that are legitimate now whether it was legitimate or not that's not the argument. they will come and ask you and sometimes you want to be angry to say what do you mean you remember that you are not in the days of your father so these are the things we want to look at and say no we need to redefine it the man of 50 years ago cannot be the man of this time and now how do we now relate this idea and yet we will still maintain balance there are three key areas of our life that I want us to note the first is the spiritual we call it the triangle of life the first is the spiritual the second is the family and the third is the career the first is the spiritual the second is the family and the third is the career this three, this triangle of life, in our own days, we must find a miss to maintain balance in these three areas of life. And we must know that we are going to do it not the way it was done some years back. If we repeat, let me say this, let me tell you this thing. If you repeat Repeat the error of your father in this generation. You are a disappointment. Our fathers didn't have the exposure that we have. They didn't have the examples that we have. Most of them navigated through life by their cancer, the cancer of their friends that are also within their locality. There is nothing like internet. There is nothing that gave them the exposure of the western world. They didn't have this experience. Now, if we do the way they did, we are a failure because we have more access than what they have. But of, of course, all our access, they are also distractions. They are also contributing factors that if we don't manage well, they will bring down, they will bring us down. So how do I maintain spiritual balance and be a family man and be a career person? I said something. I said you can be spiritual and still be romantic. Amen. Somebody told me, he said, tell our brothers. They just know how to speak in tongues. They don't know how to speak to a lady. Ah. I said they know how to speak in tongues but they don't know how to speak you can't be spiritual and yet accurately still be romantic can I tell you something I didn't know how to love I did not Sam don't look at me like that I grew up in a male hostel all of us are boys I did not know how to show love. In fact, I recall very well when I was in relationship and I traveled to greet my fiance and I returned. She asked me a question. She said, did you miss me? I said, no, I didn't miss you. <laughs> and that was the truth. I don't know how to miss people. <laughs> I said, I don't miss you. I said, I miss me. I miss you. I said, I miss you. I spoke to my father. But it's just the truth. What can you tell a lady that you didn't? When even if you did not miss her, you will tell her you miss her. When no, you will look for a way. Ah! I said that is that is just me. Sam. <laughs> Now, see, if I was spiritual, 
He taught me all about God, God, God. But romance, ah, 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 how do you? It was the women of those days that didn't mark, they didn't cousin talk about romance. The ladies of this generation. Ah, you don't know how to be romantic. You now think honestly, oh more need to go live, go ah. You don't can say, oh, can't say, oh, can't say, oh, ignore ma, 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 ma. You didn't know how to touch anything. Oh, it won't work. If you are praying and fire, they come out of your mouth. A woman with, when we hold couples meeting, in fact, at pastoral level, our pastors, pastor's wife, they will still say, we pastors, we are not romantic. We didn't try. Hey, oh, Lord, we are trying. <laughs> we just know we are trying. The ladies of this generation, they understand and they have a picture mindset of what it means for a man to be romantic. Unfortunately, most of us, we don't have the idea that they have. So even when we are still saying, and we are trying, it didn't measure up to 30% of what they are expecting. So, all our trying here could still make sense. Nollywood, Lucy Kobama. Nollywood, while I'm on Tokobawa. Eh? Telemundo. I'm working here while I'm on Tokobawa. Oh, no. You. When I was growing up, I didn't see my dad tell my mom that I love you. Me, Bori. Me, I'm going to Me, Bori, my dad. Kid daddy, Mr. Pe. I love you. You see, if it's but what is that then? So we are redefining this thing. Now you go out first day, second day, third day. You didn't tell your wife anything. My wife has told me, Tell your wife, yes, you know, a year, it's been yes, you know. That's my fidelity to church. Oh, you mean the deed? Me, Rita, no, 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 he appreciates. Okay? We will try. I have also observed something. You know our mothers. You know how energetic they are. You know the strength they had. When they are working at home, when they go to school, they return, they work. Do you notice that the women of this generation, they don't have 50% of the strength? If you will be a man, you need to redefine your masculinity. Ah, they will do it. If you pack your dirty clothes, give it to the wife. Clothes your mom, wife. Clothes your wife. You will one day come back home and not meet that woman. You can salon. You don't want to visit home. And you'll be thinking that. Say, bang one, yaw. Say, bang one, bang one, yaw. Say, man, for son, yeah. It is. <laughs> So, the reality that we are faced with, let's tell ourselves the truth. This is the world we are living. How do we now act and maintain balance? I will be a spiritual man. I will lead with integrity. I will be a family man that my children can have access to. When I was young and I want to go to church, I pray before I go to tell my dad that I want to go to church. My dad is not a pagan. So my Lord pray. The Bible says the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Oh God, touch his heart. I want to go for VG. Just like you said. When it comes around then, it is difficult for you to sit in the city room. There is nothing that will connect you. To. Please, sir, if you are a father here and your children are not connected to you, you are in trouble. I, I, I tell you, I lie not. You are in trouble. Be, don't tell me that I need that. Your children don't have access to you to say, Dad, this is. And you are saying you are a father. You are not a father. That is the problem. 
later in life you will discover that you and the bond you cannot make now you can't make it in the future you can't form the bond now many of us that are young the bond our dad didn't have with us now they can't have it when they call on phone maximum 30 seconds 30 sort of time. <laughs> Daddy money king king say what that fine okay sir eh eh can it be eh okay go sorry man nothing to say so you need to create the bond your children four five you cannot engage in discussion now you think when they become a teenager they will talk to you na lie what it done here so we are looking at how do we do it that is why i said we are redefining it it's about mind all through this meeting is about a change of orientation don't do father the way it was done 10 years ago 20 years ago and we also need to begin to prepare because those of us in the generation of ai we also must prepare ahead we must prepare for what we come ahead. Don't let the situation come before we prepare. We don't cross the bridge when we get there. We cross the bridge before we get there. When we get there, we cross the bridge. It's too late. Oh. We cross the bridge in our mind. We have a plan. How to cross the bridge before we get there. When I was still single, I remember that the first ex in fact it's still is still in my notes i think 2008 or 2009 that was when i started writing tips about parenting and i got married in 2014. so i started writing down tips about parenting from either 2008 or 2009 so you don't wait till you marry in fact, by the time you get married and you are writing tips of prayer, you are ready late. You are ready late. So, I want you to no note this. The, the struggle we want to look at is, how do I balance the three angles of life in this dispensation? I cannot, I cannot do as an African man alone. I must combine my Africanness with spirituality. You know, somebody said it is the church that has caused problem for men. I said, how? Wala wala man so with me. We should um, we should help our wives and we should do all of those things that we need to do. That if the ladies that marry Christian men, if they know that Timo Basilada the man will give them a factory set. <laughs> that they will compose themselves. You may go and see women that woman will only marry you will see that they get composed. I said that's not the issue. That's not it's you know that is from a perspective, but not Christian perspective. Because they are saying that women that marry men that know that they have the tendency to marry more than one wife. If they ask them to do something, they will respond. But that is not Christian approach. It's not Christianly. So, if we are going to redefine masculinity in this time, these three angles of life we must take into account. What are the things we need to do to embrace change? I said, my work was easy. Because when you began to talk about reading, reading, the first thing I want to share is that we need to be deliberate about learning. But I now discover something that reading does not bring learning. But reading is the way to learning. I can read but not learn. But there is no way I will learn without reading. But see, learning is deliberate. It's intentional. I submit to learning. Can, do you know that men generally, we have a style of learning and we have a problem with learning. 
Number one, most men have an idea that their wife cannot teach them anything. Most men have an idea that if they will learn, it must come from a superior. That is why you will see some adults. They will say, Kill him, kill him. Kill him. Because most times they think experience means they have learned. I have come to discover that you said you need to think about what you are thinking. You can have an experience and not learn. I have come to discover that people are reading, they are knowledgeable, they have certificates. But honestly, they don't have anything of this. So if we are going to redefine masculinity in our time we must submit to learning how can i be a christian and i will still be a good family man and in my career i will still be excellent the reason some people the reason some people fail in family is because of career they concentrate on work so when they work work they say they are what workaholic and they don't have time for their home. So they excel in one, they fail in the other. And they claim that the reason they failed there, no, that's not the reason. The reason they failed is because they didn't learn how to manage the three angles of life. So you must learn how to manage spiritual. You must learn how to manage career. I mean, excellent man in the place of our work. If you are a pastor, be excellent. If you are a businessman, come on, be excellent. Can I say this? If you are a businessman, you don't need to be involved in shady deals before you become rich. You, I tell you, people say that it's not possible. It's a lie. You can do business. Oh, one day, you remember, we were struggling with that. You can do business in God's way. And you will do well. You, you don't need to cut corners. You don't. You can be wealthy and be rich without getting involved in corruption. Let's tell people the truth. Yes, the bill is there at home. Yes, the money we need to do, we need to give, they are there. But we can be righteous. Be a man that we do business forthrightly. Who says that if you we get a contract every time it must be uh, you must do bri bri. I said it I said the problem why we say that in the church is because we cannot pay the needed spiritual sacrifice to get this done our word is spiritual we need to understand that if you're in the business okay last week you remember we were somewhere and uh, JD was talking about a business person. He said, in fact, you need more prayer in the business world. He said, in the business, in fact, you need to pray. Many people that are Christians that are doing business, they don't have prayer meeting. They don't pray over the business. In the place of their work, they get to the place, they get to the business. They don't know that um, people that are doing this type of business have also gone spiritual to herbalist. They have met with somebody to do something. You now get, you go to your place of work. You just felt, oh, okay, it is everything. No. You also get there, you pray in tongues. But because if the spiritual language is faulty, you didn't learn how to be spiritual. Have you noticed, sir? Most of the time, it is women that speak in tongues. The men don't speak in tongues. <laughs> Why? Explain it. Preachy. And of course, we know that women are more emotional when the power of God is moving. They are the first to. Men are still staggering and struggling. You do like this. Amen. <laughs> Spiritual, family, and career. So the first thing I said you should do is to, to be what? Intentional about learning. In, please, he said it. Read books about every, read books about how to be spiritual and how to be how to be romantic. Read it. If nobody has written the book, write it. Use your experience to write it. That 
I was searching for how to balance it. The second thing, quickly, because I said, I don't want to take time, and they have come to give me. No, that was not the time you promised me. That was not the time you promised me. Okay, the second thing I want to say is that, okay, let me quickly say this about learning. There are three things or four things I want to tell you about learning. Number one, if you are going to learn, you must acquire knowledge. You must ask questions. I was asking questions. I said, financial freedom. People used to talk about it. And I began to ask questions. How can a minister, pastor, be free financially? And I will not merchandise the gospel. I want to know there are legitimate ways. And there are what? Illegitimate ways. I can't ask you that we come for counseling to pay money. <laughs> if, if, if I will cancel you, primarita uh, primary counseling, how, how much will I charge? Entrance fee. <laughs> I, $40. Uh, no, no. I can't charge. Questions. Sit among people. Ask, how can this thing be done in a godly way? Ask questions. Ask questions. Now, the third thing I want to say is, yes, attempt issues. You also learn by attempting. And um, the, let me quickly run through this. Three points that is left about how to redefine masculinity. The second thing is that you need to discover the mark that is set for you. Don't walk on the mark that was set for our fathers. Walk on the mark that is set for you. Paul was speaking. He said, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now listen, every man has a mark set for him. In this dispensation, there is a way God expects you to run your race, to run your life. Don't ask for, don't run your life based on the settings of age long time. Run it based on our own time. God set a mark and it is an excellent mark. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for mediocrity. John Mason was defining mediocrity. He said it's a region that is bounded by indecision, by lack of vision. And he said something again, four different things. So when you talk about somebody that is a mediocre, Number one, it means the person lacks vision. It means the person is thinking about the past. Those are the things that John Mason said. He said it's a region that was binded by lack of vision, by past thinking. A man that is always looking. John Mason said you can't drive forward by looking back. Everything we need to learn from history, let's learn it. History is relevant. Amen. But for where we are going, you can't be looking back and be driving forward. It's not possible. So understand that there is a mark that is set for you. The third thing I want to say, it has also been said, I will just lay a little emphasis on it. Create a healthy network. We are redefining masculinity based on our generation and scripture. So create a good network. Anybody that is always talking, always, every time, every time, every time, is about things of old. It's about things of old. It's about things of old. We learn from them, but we are not settling there. If you are alone, you can't get better. You will depreciate. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 27 verse 17, it says, iron sharpens iron. As a man sharpened the continents of his friend. Now, so if you don't have a good network, all you will be dealing with 
is about the mindset, the things that only you have acquired in the past. So if you are going to redefine it, I, I, I stand to tell you this truth. I could, it is possible that I would have been a mediocre. It's possible that I would have been small. It's possible that I would have been restricted. But one factor that changed it was my association. The people I relate with. Those, those days are you know, say a little bit of me. This type of clothes, me, I'm a tobini. You tobi, then you're my grossy, then you're my bambe. You, you will sew the clothes that will be big. That in the years to come, you'll be feeling it. <laughs> but my association, the people I work with, that you only are so too smart. The network, everything that if you are alone, you'll be myopic. You can't see everything only by yourself. So when we are saying redefine it, work with healthy network, people that will challenge you. There are three basic group of people you need in life. You need the mentors, you need the colleague, and you need the mentee. Do you know, sir, when I was considering quitting during my PhD, because at the point I was tired, my fear was not how to explain to my colleague that will not be a problem. My fear is not how to tell my mentor. See, my greatest fear was how to tell my protege. Some of them are too dairy. That is it. Daddy, eh, kakinema, a long way to me. And they, 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 they will tell me, you, you will not finish your PhD, honestly. As if they, they are paying me, they are not the one paying me. They are protege, they are mentee. But the way they will tell me, that you will not finish the what? This prayer that we have been praying for you in the past two years, you will not finish. You will finish. We have been praying, you will finish. So you must finish. My greatest fear was how to explain to them. If you don't have the network of people above you, people that are your colleague and people that are, you are raising. They are, see people that you are raising, they are also holding you accountable. They are holding you, are, so when you stop, they will keep quiet. The day you will tell them to move, they will say, but you also stop at a point. And I mean, I have protégés, sons and daughters that are so, their mouth can see anything. They, 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 will, they can say anything to me. Well, because that's the way I also tell those that are ahead of me. Okay. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly round up. The last thing that I want to challenge us is that we need to have a positive outlook to life. The Bible says in Titus chapter 1 verse 15, Unto the pure, all things are pure. Unto them that are defied and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience is defied. Positive outlook to life. Life is neutral. We only see it from the coloration of our lenses. Life is neutral. But we see it from the coloration of our lenses. Things are the way things are. It is general. But all of us will not have the same view to it. Because the coloration of our lenses determines what we see. If you wear a black eye goggle, you will discover that this place will be darker. If you remove it, this place is the way it is. <laughs> what changed what you see was what was in your eyes. If you bring another goggle, that is tainted and you wear it it will change the color this place is not changing color it is what you wear on your eyes so when you have a positive outlook to life you will see life the way it is you will see life 
from the positive dimension. During COVID, some people saw lockdown, but others saw opportunities. If you are a man here and you have believed that some things are not possible, change it. You have believed that, ah, in this Nigeria, it is not possible, change it. Change it. Everything that you believe is not possible, it is not because it is actually not possible. It is because of the mind, the way you are seeing it. I have come to conclude this meeting wouldn't have been like this. And, and, and I want to share this before I close. Last year, when we had this men's program, it was everything I had, everything we had, we put into it. In fact, the savings that I had to pay my children's school fees, you know, September, school will resume. Everything we put into it. And so by the time we finished the program, there was no money for the, the savings that I had kept for their school fees, we had spent it on program. So there was no money. So I told my wife, when I am born as woman, I was school. Say be must say a lady. Ah, and I can say the math body. What's the salary? Oh, the salary you will cover was school massa. So I jump. I said, so we shall pray. And when we finished the program, there was no debt, everything was okay. But me, I know that I have spent every last and somebody called me and said ah echo program i think a week after echo program i said we thank god i was wrong it was wonderful oh lord he said ah i have a contribution for the program i said we have finished the program and we didn't have debt to pay oh no i have a gift i wish i had give some money but once a year in case it was in the next month i have something to give i will give what i want to give so in my mind, I was saying, why will I stop? I give if you want to give. Oh, I send your account number. And I was thinking, well, when we are finished program, you know the zeal. How much would they send? So I sent my account number. And when they sent the money, <laughs> I just told my wife, let's go and pay school fees. <laughs> said, ah, see what's the money, what is the Let's go. In fact, we have changed. For the first time, this fees I pay 50%, 50%. You understand? <laughs> but this last year, I paid everything. Less if we every once I settled the other, we still get changed. So I said, God, thank you for this year. Next year in this year, you will have low. But when we enter into this year. And everything was up. You know what was what is happening now. I told myself, I said, this year is likely going to be much harder than. So I started praying. God, please do something. And He came to help me. This pastor is always challenging me that I didn't, I didn't tell him what was happening. And He changed. What God did was He just changed my outlook. I just began to see things positively. So they said we would do banner. We are going to spend this amount. I said we have it. As at the time I said we had it, we didn't have it. The the, the money was I I told do the condition and they said it's about hundred thousand. I said we will send the money. When I was saying we will send the money, there is no money to send. So after a while, I said okay, for the banner and the flyers. Let's pay this amount first. Bring the banner. Let's start. Because you know the money is not complete. And that was how we started. And as the program was drawing closer, people will see the flyer and say, Ah, I want to sell. In this economy of petrol, almost 1,000. I want to send my token. 100,000. My token. I said, This is good as a token. I want to send my token. 50,000. It's good as a token. And they began to send the token, the token, and the token. And everything that was needed was eventually covered completely. Everything. One of my sons was saying yesterday, he said he believed 
that anything that God asks you to do, He will finance it. And everything was, there was no money. Everybody knows that there is no money. But everything started by God changing my mindset. Believe that it can be done and it will be done. Beloved, I've come to challenge you. Don't settle for mediocrity. Don't settle for the yester years. There are wonderful things ahead of us. There are great things ahead of us. As men, as fathers, as uncles, as brothers, in every dispensation, in any dimension, there are great things ahead of us. I don't want you to have a mind that it is not possible. It is possible because the Bible says, with God, all things are possible. And I pray for you by the grace of God, you begin to see possibilities. In every dimension of your life, you will see possibilities. Enter into the realm of possibilities in the name of Jesus. Thank you.